Welcome to this module on Information Systems Acquisition and Implementation. Implementing a new information system typically goes through a process called the Systems Development Life Cycle, or SDLC. There are many different frameworks for SDLC. The one presented here is very simple so that you have an overview of the process. Each organization may have a different framework based on the experiences and complexity of their IT department and the type of systems that they manage. It is becoming more evident that user input needs to begin in the planning and analysis phase. The needs of the users will define the requirements in the design phase. The design phase may be longer or shorter depending on the organization's relationship with a vendor. If previous decisions have to work with only one vendor, then the options for design may be limited. The process of acquiring and implementing a new system follows a project management sequence. A committee will be established to review the project objectives and the scope of the project. System goals should be established and the committee then moves into defining the system requirements. What items must the new system have versus what might someone want the system to have comprise the system requirements. This is where scope creep can become a problem. Next is usually the request for proposals from one or more vendors and the evaluation of the proposals that have been submitted. The final step of this phase is the contract negotiation, which needs to be explicit about change management during implementation, financial liability for failing to deliver on time, and other minute details. The second phase starts after the contract is signed and contain as many problems as the first phase. Experienced leadership is needed to plan the tasks and activities and to communicate with all levels of management. Change management and workflow analysis are probably the most important characteristics of the installation. Next, the staff training needs to be done, not too far away and not too close to the finish of the installation. Each of these phases has many options and needs to be discussed before and during the project planning and installation. For example, some organizations may choose to roll out the installation to only a few units at a time. The goal live is the time when the new system is up and running. Of course, converting data from the old system to the new system needs to be planned out before this event as well as planning for downtime procedures and problems that may occur during the go-live. Workflow can be started in the system acquisition phase and continue into implementation phase. It is best to document the existing workflows, the business process, physical workflow, and information workflow prior to implementing the specific hardware and software. The physical layout of the hospital or physician practice can influence the layout of the hardware as well as the flow of a client through the clinic or through the emergency department. The new workflow should be established and analyzed prior to making decisions on hardware and wiring so that the installation doesn't look as if the designer was trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. Unfortunately, understanding and managing unintended consequences has become a major topic after the installation of a new system. These are consequences that occur when new workflows reveal positive or negative circumstances that affect the organization. For example, many new types of errors occurred when CPOE, or Provider Order Entry, was first introduced. Previously, providers would talk with nurses before writing the orders in the patient's charts. The chart would then be given to the unit secretary for transcription. Computerized 
provider order entry meant that the provider did not have to talk with the nurse. This led to many orders not being carried out in a timely manner. It also led to a significant job change for the unit secretary, who no longer had to transcribe orders. It has been difficult to quantify the value of new systems. There is no clear way to calculate the return on investment. First, some systems may show tangible value compared to those systems that create intangible value to the organization. Some changes are mandated by reporting agencies and by changes in the industry. Other systems are necessary in order to deliver a new service or product that may or may not produce the revenue that is estimated. Other changes are needed for quality improvement to overcome some of the unintended consequences that were discussed previously. There are different ways to calculate the value of an information system's investment, and each project should be evaluated individually rather than trying to determine one method for all instances. Thank you.